Okay, this is the fuel pressure gauge kit. Got it on eBay. When you, if you're shopping for one, get one that has the relief valve and a clear plastic tube that hooks onto it. It's like three dollars, five dollars more than I spent on this one. Um, if you don't do that, when you go to unhook this hose, it's under pressure. You're going to have fuel spray everywhere. Uh, for me, when I did it, it sprayed all over me, all over the red hot exhaust manifold. And if it had a lit up stop, drop, and roll, probably would not have helped me. So, uh, another first thing I did was disconnect the fuel line, which is, runs from there to there. Uh, this end, which goes into the fuel rail, you just push back on the black clip and then pull the pipe out. This other end is a nightmare. It has the green clip, you gotta squeeze the two ends and then pull the pipe off and the green clip remains on the end of the, the pipe down there. Uh, <clears throat> I tried using one of these, it was of uh, uh, no use to me. Uh, I may still be able to use it. Uh, so don't bother buying one of these. Uh, 2005 does not have a fuel test port they removed it and it's like $80 for the jumper pipe with the test port on there I'm not spending that uh, but my first test was just going directly from the fuel rail uh, to the gauge and I turned the key a few times to prime the pump and pressurize the system it should be at about 58 psi and I'm running about 32, 33 PSI. So I'm gonna hook in the T-pipe and start the engine, see what pressure I get with the engine running, but uh, it's pretty much a given fact that this brand new fuel pump, the second one, um, is also failed. Okay, I have the engine running, tapped into the fuel line. And I am showing just shy of 30 PSI. This brand new fuel pump is no good, just like the brand new fuel pump before it. If you need a fuel pump, don't buy it from the mass market guys. Or if you have to get it, uh, buy a Denso. Uh, they'll cost you a lot more. Otherwise, buy it online. You'll save a whole lot. Uh, if your fuel pressure gauge does not have a relief valve, that's how mine is. Pull out the fuel pump relay, start the engine. The engine will run a little bit and it'll stall out uh, once the fuel pressure gets to zero. That, and then at that point, remove your fuel pressure gauge. Okay, we got our 5 16th inside diameter vinyl hose hooked up to the fuel line down there. You'll see how I mentioned the red clip, the green clip will be left behind and it will be going into a suitable container. If you, at this point, turn the ignition switch on, your fuel pump will uh, kick on for about 10 seconds, then shut off because it's just priming the system. Uh, so we gotta set it so that the fuel pump runs continuously until the, until the tank is drained. Okay, now we come over to our uh, relay, which is located in the fuel box under the hood. <clears throat> Previous mentioned, this is the fuel pump relay. Pull it off, you'll see a little diagram on there that doesn't really tell you a whole lot of information. If you look on the bottom, there are numbers associated with each pin. And number 85 and 86 are the pins that will uh, activate the solenoid. Uh, and when it's in the resting position, uh, pin 30, which is right there, will be uh, on 87A. So power in the resting position, power is being delivered from here to here. When the solenoid is activated, and that, that pin, that middle pin, 87A, is actually just an empty hole there. It doesn't do anything in the resting position. Uh, but when the computer activates the solenoid, when you turn your key, uh, it switches over from 30 to 87. So it'll go from this corner pin to that corner diagonally. And that will turn your fuel pump on. So that's the two pins that we are going to short. And remember, when you're looking at it this way, it's reversed because you're flipping it down 
and going in there. So 30 is actually this whole, this upper right hand side there. And 87 is this lower left hand side. So that's where we're going to jump across and the fuel pump will immediately kick on. Okay, the fuel pump is still marginally functional, so I shorted pin 30 to 87 on the fuel pump relay. Make sure you short the correct pins. Don't want to go frying your computer. And I'm letting it pump into a appropriate container. And while you're draining using this method, take the cap off the gas tank so that it it doesn't create a vacuum. You'll actually hear it thumping if it does create a vacuum. Okay, well my fuel pump has run dry. Both front wheels chocked front and back and the back of the van is up on jack stands. Don't take a risk, don't work using just a hydraulic jack. Put it on stands. Okay, first you want to disconnect the fuel pump power pigtail which is located above the rear axle. Okay, now you'll get under the car. You can disconnect this breather hose here. You can disconnect your line from your fuel pump there. When you do, a lot of fuel will spill out because that's uh, still filled with uh, fuel up to the rail. Uh, you're going to remove the clamp from your a filler hose and a filler tube and you may want to run a uh, small screwdriver under there to loosen that up and then as we drop the tank you'll be pulling that off there and then behind the rear driver's wheel well there is another breather connector up here don't forget to unconnect that otherwise you can break off the fitting that's welded onto the tank now we're going to be removing the uh, four bolts that hold these two rails on. I'll loosen this one, then I'm gonna remove this one, let the tank da drop down a little bit, uh, check for clearance, make sure there's no hoses that I missed. Then I'm gonna put a jack underneath the tank, remove this rail, lower it the rest of the way, then drag it out. Okay, the fuel pump's out. Remove the pigtail from the two month old Chinese pump. Uh, also disconnected the fuel line from the pump itself. Then I'm going to take a uh, mallet and my chisel and I'm going to uh, bang the ring to spin it off and then the pump will lift right out. Uh, also, it's a good time to clean off the top of the tank. Obviously, I just did this two and a half months ago. Uh, but also, you'll want to uh, at the same time, use some special spark retardant and spray that on there. Here's your spark retardant. Okay, got my Chinese fuel pump out and my American one to go in. <clears throat> when you first take this off, you're going to find this ring real hard to get off the, uh, off the tank. Uh, you're going to just keep, just keep banging on it, uh, but if you insist on buying these Chinese fuel pumps that are overpriced f from the uh, mass market uh, auto parts stores, uh, don't worry. Uh, the more times you change your fuel pump, the easier it gets, So, and you'll be changing it a lot. Uh, this fuel pump cost me 180 bucks. Uh, I had no choice. Well, the one before that cost me 180 bucks. I had to exchange it after six months. You can get that same fuel pump on eBay, brand new, for about 50 bucks. So, uh, if your van's still running and you need a fuel pump, go online, buy a good one. Uh, but after it's out, you're going to really, you should empty the tank out, get any gasoline out of there. Then use soap and water, like laundry detergent, to clean it, rinse it out real good, get on any dirt and get any dead mice that might be in there. Um, get it all clean, and then you'll put the new fuel pump in. Uh, make sure your O-ring is seated properly. I always lubricate it with a little bit of oil, and then when I'm putting this ring on, I put a lot of oil on it. Okay, follow your instructions. Make sure everything's seated properly as far as your fuel gauge sender. And drop that in. See there's an arrow up there. 
to uh, indicate where this tab goes and then you'll have to push down in order to get this puppy it's the pump itself is spring loaded uh, what I'll do is I'll actually stand on there with my foot pushed down yep I got that starting to stretch out because I'm getting changed so many times. Uh, so stand on there with your foot to push down on it, get the tab started, and then I'm going to use my hammer and chisel again to bang this around the other way. And then it's on to installation. Okay, I got it back in. <clears throat> when you raise, start raising it up, you're going to want to line it up with the uh, fuel filler hose. Uh, this is really a two-man job. I did it by myself. I balanced the uh, tank on the jack stand right about there uh, but get it most of the way up and then you got to feed it uh, your your uh, breather hose that's back here through a bulkhead in the in the frame uh, then uh, don't connect anything though just jack it up make sure that the hose the filler pipe is onto the filler spout <clears throat> And then get one of your braces on, uh, just get a th few threads of the bolt holding it on, and then do the same to the other side, and then tighten them down, hook up your fuel line, your breather hose, your breather hose, your fuel filler, and of course your um, uh, electrical connection for the fuel pump. Now I'm going to put fuel into the tank. Uh, I'm going to prime the pump and pump gas into the uh, back into the uh, a gas can and then I'm going to do a fuel pressure test. Okay here's my fuel pressure and all I did was run directly from the fuel line. I'm not hooked up to the rail or anything. Engine isn't running and I just jumpered my um, uh, the, where the relay was and I am running at just over 50 psi which is great. I'm actually going to pull the plug on this. And well, it leaks down a little bit when I remove the power, but it's not drifting any further after that. Um, if you remember from the beginning of the video, I was running at, what was it, like 28 PSI or 30 PSI, which is way too low. Uh, this pump will probably even run higher when the alternator is running because that's putting out uh, just over 14 volts. So... Uh, I'm feeling pretty confident that my code 1P0171 will be gone with this uh, uh, new American fuel pump.